Hey guys, how's it going? I hope you're all doing great, as I always say. And in this video, we got a couple stories from the Northwest Territories here in Canada. The first one is a story of the Northern Lights taking or killing people, either one, what have you. And the second one is a little darker than that, so be prepared for that. And yeah, pull up a stump and let's jump into it. Thank you for watching. So I figured I'd start us off with something that I had mentioned a long time ago in a video in 2020, I think, where I had talked about the Northern Lights taking people. So there is a belief in the Northwest Territories, Nunavut and the Yukon, and probably Alaska and other Northern countries and territories, where if you whistle at the Northern Lights, then they can swoop down and take you away. Now, whether that means take your body as well, or your soul, it's kind of up for debate in different cultures. In fact, even in some, they say that whistling at the Northern Lights is good, and they can dance for you. But one story that I'm referring to is from Hay River in the Northwest Territories. There were five hunters with their dog sleds who were returning during the night. They had stopped to rest, but yet, apparently the bells that were on the dog's harnesses created a whistling noise, and instead of being swooped away, the aurora borealis surrounded the men, and they inhaled some part of the aurora, and immediately died, and they were found like this, however long later I'm not sure, but they were found in the same spot. There have also been various stories of children going out at night and whistling at the northern lights and simply disappearing into thin air or being swept away or what have you. Either way, I found it interesting to talk about because I've never really spoken about that ever since I mentioned it. So here it is, because the other story is also from the Northwest Territories. So keep that stump pulled up and let's jump into that one. So quite a while ago, in 2008, a native friend and I went up to the Northwest Territories on a hunting trip. A little background is that I live in Alberta, and I'm in the Canadian Army, 3rd Canadian Division, so I'm a good tracker. My friend, who we'll call Panuau, which was his surname, is Algonquin. He is also an extremely talented tracker, and he also lives in Alberta, but was born on the reservation. His family had taught him all the legends and customs when he was growing up, but he handles modern society very well, obviously. Anyways, we drove for a long time. I wasn't keeping track, but it was more than just a few days. We were headed into a heavily forested region west of the Great Slave Lake. I believe this is the general area where it happened. There were no government roads back there, so the drive was rough. The snow was also terrible, but we were both used to it, and of course, we also loved the cold weather anyways. When we found a good spot to park, we got our things out of the bed of my truck and began trudging through the snow to find a place to set up camp. We wanted to camp in a place a few kilometers from where we parked to give us a bit of a challenge. Even though it was very heavy snow, the place was absolutely beautiful. The nature was completely untouched. I tried snapping a few shots with my phone, but none of the pictures came out good. It was 2008 after all. It was disappointing, but at least the drive there was worth it. After walking for about three hours, we came into a clearing in the trees and we made the decision that it was here that we should set up camp. I began setting up the two-person tent, and Pan was clearing off the snow from the ground to prepare for a fire pit. I had set up the tent in our sleeping bags, and helped Pan with the fire pit. Once that was done, I told him to follow me to find some firewood. He nodded, understanding that it was going to be dark very soon and we would need a fire. We both had hatchets with us, and began chopping the branches off of some pines that were close to our campsite. The wood was wet, so it was going to be difficult to get it dry for a campfire. We had a good stack of thick branches, though, and we carried them back. When we returned, there were tracks in the snow that weren't ours. They seemed to be kind of morphed, like almost human, but not quite. Pan and I exchanged strange looks 
and set our wood piles in the area that was cleared for a fire. I said, you think someone else is camping nearby? Pan shrugged. I can't say for sure. A normal person wouldn't walk in the snow and barefoot. We returned to our tent and we took our rifles out of their carrier cases, now alert. We should get the fire going now. We've probably got an hour left of sunlight, I said. I headed to the pit to set up some wood and covered it with some dry hay that I had brought for fire starting and got to work on that flint. The fire, unfortunately, died out early, so we tossed our beers in a plastic bag and headed into the tent. I get in my sleeping bag and I fell asleep quick because I was really tired. I was woken late at night though by the sound of snow crunching. I got out of my sleeping bag as silently as I could, but the movement seemed to alert whatever was outside and the snow crunching stopped. I shook Pan until he woke up. He knew I wouldn't have woken him up unless it was something serious. I pointed to the tent floor and grabbed my rifle. Pan grabbed his as well. I practically tore the zipper down and snapped my rifle up as fast as I could, stepping into the tent slowly. Pan held a flashlight in one hand and his rifle in the other, pointing the light in all directions. Nothing, except more footprints like we had found earlier. Something was definitely following us. I'll get a fire going. Don't you let go of that rifle, I said. Pan nodded and held his rifle with both hands. I got a fire going as quickly as I could and pulled my rifle from around my arm and sat close to the fire. We sat there until sunrise, feeling watched the entire time. I was sweating even though it was probably five degrees out. When it was light enough, we made a quick breakfast and decided that we should track whatever was following us. For the next four hours, we were following a very faint trail. We couldn't be sure what we were following was what made the tracks back at camp, or just other wildlife. Regardless, eventually we were led to a carcass that was forced on the branch of a tree. Basically, it was as if someone had torn a caribou in half and forced the second half onto a tree branch. It smelled terrible and it was partially frozen. It seemed like it had been there for at least a day or two. We continued following the trail, but the smell of death and decay just never left. Somewhere along the walk, we heard a very distant, but also very distinct shriek of some sort. It was like the sound that a pig makes when it's being butchered while still alive. The hairs on the back of my neck stood straight on end. We should leave, Pan stated. Why? I asked. Bad spirits walk among us. I gave him this kind of weird, confused look and replied, Are you sure? I'd like to know what's out here. And he says, Your curiosity is going to get us killed. I sighed and nodded, letting Pan take point on the walk back. And I didn't recognize anything on the way back, not even the dead caribou in the tree. Are we lost? I asked Pan. And he stopped and turned to me and said, I don't know. The trail vanished only minutes after we turned back. I was getting mad at this point. I said, well, why the hell didn't you say anything? He said, I didn't want to alarm you. I figured if we walked in the direction that we came, we would get to camp. But even our tracks are gone. We need to stop now and figure out where the hell we are. I took my backpack off and opened it up and was searching for my map and compass. While I was busy in my backpack, I saw Pan scramble for his rifle from the corner of my eye. He brought it up and fired off three rounds. I looked at him and said, what happened? I also grabbed my rifle, but noticing Pan's face was, white as the snow on the ground? Wendigo, he said. I said, what? What the hell is that? And he didn't reply. He simply began backing up and beckoned to me. I closed my backpack and put it on, and we both jogged through the trees. We had now been out there for close to seven hours, and the sun was going to set soon. I took duct tape from my bag and secured a flashlight on the end of my rifle, and I handed the tape to Pan for him to do the same. 
We were no longer jogging, but we were still picking up the pace indeed. We wouldn't be able to track anything in the dark, that's for sure. We were feeling watched all the time and kept hearing branches snapping only meters away. Somehow, though, we found our camp. By this time, it was already dark. We packed our things up as quickly as we could, and we left all the non-essentials behind. Our tents had been torn open as well as our bags. It was very obvious that something was here. Right as we were about to depart, I shone my flashlight at the tree line, and we had just come out of. What I saw made my animalistic instincts kick into hyperdrive. It looked so skinny that its bones were almost pushing out of its skin. The eyes were so sunken, almost black, and the bony fingers were jagged like twigs. It was just standing there, watching us, a viscous black fluid dripping from its mouth. I gasped for air and fired around, cocked the rifle and fired again, and again, my hands were shaking. Pan now had also began firing. Once the smoke had settled, the thing was gone. We were now sprinting to find my truck. I wish we hadn't parked so far away. We had no idea what our surroundings were, only what direction we were going. Everything was pitch dark except for the straying beams of our flashlights. I was so exhausted, and I was now running entirely off adrenaline. We heard the screams again, but this time it didn't stop, and they were much closer to us us. I turned while running. Where was Panuau? I stopped running, knowing the danger, but I was not going to leave my friend behind. I shouted his name multiple times, only hearing the ghastly, inhuman screeches in return. I shot my flashlight at the trees, desperately looking for any sign of him. He's gone. Then I saw a movement. A lot of movement. This was no longer just one thing hunting me. This was many, many things hunting me. I didn't want to leave Pan behind, but my brain was screaming at me to run. Whatever they were, they were now only one to three meters away from me, and my body just kind of turned against my will and began sprinting on its own. At least that's what it felt like. I now know what it's like to be the gazelle being chased by the lion. I just felt fear, and nothing else. I don't know how long I was running, but at one point I broke out of the trees and into the road. I was ecstatic, and continued sprinting down the road. After another few minutes I finally spotted my truck. I tore my keys from the lanyard on my backpack, and as soon as I got to the door, shoved my keys in, and threw myself on the seat. I locked the door, hoping it might do some good, and started the engine. The headlights went on, and there he was. Standing in front of the car was Pan. I screamed, get in the car, Pan, please. He just stood there and twitched, looking like he was almost being controlled, and then sprinted off into the woods. My instincts once again kicked in and I slammed on the pedal. I was practically flying down the iciest roads you could imagine. I don't know how I didn't wreck, I don't even remember driving, I didn't slow down until I was back on the government road, just crying the entire time. I don't know what happened to my friend, but I can't help but feel like it's my fault. I still have some PTSD from all this, but yeah, that's what happened. So, let me know what you thought of those two down in the comments. Do you have any stories of your own? I have an email that you can send them to down below, and I also have links where you can support the channel if you want to. Other than that, I think that I shall see you in the next one. Thank you for pulling up a stump, and thank you for watching as always.